won't last forever, right? They'll be back in school in a couple of months. And uh, out of your hair again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, tonight, if you got your Bibles, we want to turn to the book of Leviticus, chapter 4. Hallelujah. Leviticus, chapter 4. And verse 7. Leviticus chapter 4 and verse 7 tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually read five different verses of Scripture in this chapter. Amen. Skipping down several verses at a time. Praise God. Leviticus chapter 4 and verse 7 says, And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation. And shall pour all of the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 18 says, And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord, that is, in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out all of the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 25. Amen. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of burnt offerings. Verse 30 says, And the priest shall take of the blood therewith with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And then verse 34 says, And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, put it upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering, shall pour out all of the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. You can be seated. This story continues in Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 9. And he shall sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar, it is a sin offering. Leviticus chapter 8 and verse 15, he tells us again. And he slew it, and Moses took the blood, and he put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger. With his finger. And he purified the altar, and he poured the blood at the bottom of the altar and sanctified it to make reconciliation upon it. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 9. Amen. If, you sound, if I sound like a broken record here, it is intended. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 9 says, And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him, and he dipped his finger in the blood, and he put it upon the horns of the altar, and he poured out the blood at the bottom. Of the altar. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you just simply or talk to you tonight from this simple title. Amen. Buckets of blood. Somebody say that with me. Buckets of blood. Hallelujah. The process. Amen. By which God chose to deal with sin. He could have chose any process that he wanted to. Amen. He could have taken any route that he wanted to. Amen. To deal with sin, deal with the sins of his people. Hallelujah. But God chose animal sacrifices. Hallelujah. The shedding of blood, amen, of animal sacrifices to deal with sin. Hallelujah. So, amen. The process by which God chose to deal with sin among his people, amen, was given to Moses in Exodus chapter 29 and verse 12. So I'm going back, amen, to Exodus 29 and verse 12. And this is where God 
told Moses how he was going to deal with sin. And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood, amen, beside the bottom of the altar. Hallelujah. Somebody say the bottom of the altar. Hallelujah. So the plan is set. Amen. Back As far back as Exodus chapter 29 and verse 4, the plan is set. Amen. God's plan is made clear to Moses. Amen. The leader of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Animal sacrifices was to be offered as burnt offerings. Amen. Unto the Lord. The blood of those animals. Amen. Was to be used to anoint the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Prepare the altar for the burnt sacrifice. The blood of that animal, amen, was used to anoint the altar. Hallelujah. Basically, he said to Moses, dip your finger in the blood, amen, and then apply that blood, amen, to the horns of the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. The horns of the altar, amen, was located at the top, amen, outer corners of the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. So the horns of the altar was at the top of the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, take your finger, amen, and anoint the horns of the altar, amen, with the blood, amen, and that will do, amen, for that location. Hallelujah. And then he said, pour out all of the blood, amen, that is left of the sacrifice. Pour out all of the blood, amen, of that animal at the bottom of the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. So, hallelujah. Whether, I, I don't know how much blood is in a bullock or, amen, or how much blood is in a sheep or how much blood is in a lamb, amen. But how much, ever how much blood there was in those animals, that blood was to be collected, amen, when they begin to uh, cut up the sacrifice, that blood was to be collected, amen. The priest was to take his finger, dip it in the blood, anoint the four corners of the horns of the altar, and then the buckets of blood that were left, amen, was to be poured out at the bottom of the altar tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Leviticus chapter 4, 5, 8, and 9, amen, are where we actually see, amen, these things put into action by Amen, the high priest that God told him to do. Amen. In Exodus, we see where the word of God came to Moses. In Leviticus 4, 5, 8, and 9, amen, we see the priest actually carrying out what God told Moses to tell them to do. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight, amen, those chapters deal with sin offerings, amen, that required blood, amen, Amen. Those uh, uh, chapters dealt, dealt with trespass offerings, amen, which required a blood sacrifice. Amen. It dealt with sin offerings, amen, for ignorance. Amen. In other words, if the children of Israel were sinning ignorantly, amen, and it was brought to their attention, amen, through the priests and a sacrifice had to be made, amen, it was an offering for their ignorance. Hallelujah. That offering required blood, amen. And then we have peace offerings mentioned there, amen, that also required, amen, blood, amen, sacrifices, hallelujah, or animal sacrifices, hallelujah. Amen. Between Leviticus and Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 11 here, amen, if you can throw that up there, amen. Between Leviticus and Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 11 that says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? By the time Isaiah came along, amen, it was all messed up. Amen. The purpose of the sacrifices, hallelujah. The reason for the sacrifices, hallelujah. Amen. It had all become just a ritual and a routine to the children of God by the time Isaiah got there. Amen. In fact, God was fed up with animal sacrifices because of, amen, how far out of culture they had gotten at that time. So the scripture says here, amen, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Hallelujah. Saith the Lord, amen, I am full of burnt offerings of rams, amen, and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, nor of lambs, nor of goats. Hallelujah. Amen. So no longer did God delight, 
amen, in the blood of these animal sacrifices. Hallelujah. Amen. Those sacrifices had, amen, become abused. Amen. And uh, they had uh, been used for their own purposes. And hallelujah, the sacrifices really didn't mean anything to the children of God anymore. So God says, hey, amen, I'm done. I'm done. Amen. With the blood of the bullocks and of lambs and of goats. Hallelujah. So God no longer delighted, uh, amen, in the blood of animal sacrifices. Hallelujah. Amen. But between Leviticus and Isaiah, amen, there was literally millions of animals that lost their lives for the sins of God's people. Millions. Amen. Whenever there would be a new king, Amen. Brought to the throne. They would literally sacrifice hundreds and thousands, amen, of lambs and bullocks and turtle doves and whatever else they, amen, had out there to sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. So over the generations and generations and generations of time, amen, there were literally millions of animals, amen, that lost their lives, amen, for the sins of God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm telling you tonight, all of those millions of animals, amen, equates to buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of blood. Hallelujah. No telling how many gallons of blood that was shed by those animals over that period of time. Hallelujah. But they were instructed by the Lord. He said, remember this. Take your finger, dip it in the blood, anoint the horns of the altars. Hallelujah. But whatever's left of that blood, whatever is left of that blood, pour it out. Pour it out at the bottom of the altar. Hallelujah. Now, I just, I just read this recently, and amen. For some reason, that grabbed my attention. This may not mean anything to anybody here tonight, but it means something to me because it grabbed my attention. As I read Leviticus chapter 4, as I went back and read Exodus, amen, where God gave the commandment to Moses. And then as I read, amen, other scriptures in the word of God concerning these animal sacrifices and the blood they had to shed. And amen, and when I looked at this process, hallelujah, of how God said, take a finger full of blood and anoint the top of the altar and take a bucket full of blood and pour them at, amen, the foot of the altar, the base of the altar, the bottom of the altar. That got my attention for some reason hallelujah amen and I want you to hold on to that thought amen for just a little while until I can get back to it hallelujah they literally poured amen millions of buckets of blood out amen at the base of that altar hallelujah hallelujah amen now uh, let's move to the New Testament for here for just a minute. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26, hallelujah, amen. This is after the animal sacrifices have been done away with, right? Hallelujah. We've got the blood of the spotless lamb, Jesus Christ, that has come, amen, suffered and died on Calvary, amen, to save mankind, hallelujah. Does that mean that everybody's going to flock to Jesus, amen, because he has, amen, sacrificed his life to them, amen, certainly not tonight, hallelujah, amen, even, even though a human being, amen, stepped up to the plate, amen, and became a human sacrifice, amen, for the sins of mankind. That did not mean and does not mean, amen, that the whole world is going to flock to Jesus, amen, lay down their, uh, or give, the, give up their sin and give up their ungodliness, amen, and serve him, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26 says this, amen, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. In the New Covenant or in the New Testament, hallelujah, he's letting us know there's not, <laughs> amen, there's not a, not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise are going to be called. Hallelujah. When I read about Azusa Street, Azusa Street started in August or April of 1906. 
And the revival of Azusa Street lasted until, amen, 1915. Praise God. So it was about a nine-year revival that took place at Azusa Street. Hallelujah. Out there in California. Hallelujah. Amen. It took place in the early 1900s. It took place when our nation was struggling. Hallelujah. Amen. When, uh, amen, it, it, was, it was an agricultural, amen, society more so back then. People had to, amen, farm. People had to grow their own gardens. People had to grow their own crops to be able to feed their families. And, and so what back then? Amen. The early 1900s or, amen, uh, it was almost like living on a totally different planet, amen, than what we do today. Hallelujah. The struggles, amen, of the American people back then was so much more Amen, that it is today. Hallelujah. So, amen, that nine years of red-hot revival, hallelujah, amen, took place in the early 1900s. Nine years. Amen. William Seymour, who was a humble, amen, black minister, was a pastor of the Azusa Street Mission work there. Hallelujah. Amen. That revival was beginning, amen, was the beginning of what would one day end up being an established presence of apostolic churches throughout the United States. Hallelujah. Amen. We can, uh, amen, all trace, amen, something back to the Azusa Street. Amen. Revival. Hallelujah. We are here today. Amen. Probably, amen, as a effort, amen, from that revival of Azusa Street. Hallelujah. Amen. That revival had far-reaching effects. Not just on the United States, but on the whole world. Hallelujah. When, amen, the news started getting out, amen, that Holy Ghost was falling and revival was taking place, amen, on Azusa Street. Hallelujah. There were men and women that would travel, amen, that would travel, hallelujah, amen, from across the seas, hallelujah, amen, to get to Azusa Street, hallelujah, amen. If they were men and women that had the means, uh, amen, to, to, to get a ticket on a ship and travel to, to the United States to get to a revival service, amen, we can say, Say, amen, that they had to be people of means. Uh, amen, they had to be wealthy people. Amen. You can read the records of the Azusa Street Revival. There were very wealthy people, amen, that traveled thousands of miles to get to the Azusa Street Revival. There were diplomats. There were government officials, amen, that came. Hallelujah. There was the hierarchy of society, amen, that uh, made their way to the Azusa Street Revivals. Hallelujah. And many of them, when they got there, amen, they actually received, amen, the truth of God's Word. Many of them received, amen, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, amen, and took that message back with them, amen, wherever they came from, hallelujah. Many of them got over here, got caught up in revival and refused to go back home, hallelujah, amen. They wanted to be a part of that great revival at Azusa Street, hallelujah. So there, there was in that little small building on Azusa Street a unique collection, amen, of people. Hallelujah. You had the rich, the wealthy, the affluent, amen, hallelujah, sitting along beside the sick, the poor, the hurting masses that flocked to that revival, hallelujah. They're all sitting there together in that little building that we've all seen pictures of, hallelujah, in books or in magazines or Somewhere we've seen the picture of the Azusa Street Mission there, hallelujah, in California. But there, there was a mixture of rich and uh, the government officials, diplomats, praise God. Some of them sent to spy, amen, on what was going on there in Azusa Street, hallelujah. But they were sent as spies to check out what was taking place. And they got over there, and the power of the Holy Ghost got a hold to them. They got the Holy Ghost and refused to go home and tell their governments what they were spying on. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There were, amen. So there was, there were some wise, 
and there were some mighty, and there were some noble, amen, called to God, amen, in those early revivals, amen, of Azusa Street, hallelujah, amen, not that many, but they were there, hallelujah, amen, and the documents are there to verify, hey, amen, the rich, the affluent, the government officials, the diplomats of, amen, this world came to Azusa Street, and some of them got what they needed there, hallelujah, Amen. But they were not nearly as many of them as they were the poor, the needy. Amen. Hallelujah. The downtrodden, amen, of society in that day. Hallelujah. Hang on with me. Amen. Now, a hundred plus years later, amen, America, amen, has prospered to the point that we have so much that grabs our attention and holds our attention today, hallelujah, that we won't hardly travel five miles to go to church, much less get a ticket and cross the ocean to go to a revival service. Hallelujah. There's so much in society today to grab, that grabs our attention. There's so much in society that gets us distracted. Amen, for what we need in God and where we need to be in God and what we need to be doing in God. Hallelujah. There's so much in this world, hallelujah, that grabs our attention and demands our attention. Hallelujah. A hundred years later, hallelujah. And like I said, a lot of people won't even travel five miles to go to church, much, much less, amen, cross an ocean. Hallelujah. Amen. We've let so much come between us and God. Amen. In that hundred years. Hallelujah. Yeah, we have. Amen. Most of us tonight, most of us that are sitting here tonight, amen, would never consider, amen, bowing down to an image, uh, amen, of silver and gold. No, no, no. I'd never bow down, amen, to an image of of a man, uh, of an image of a, a bird or a creeping thing or a wild beast or whatever. None of us would bow down and pray to an image, amen, of silver and gold. Hallelujah. Most of us, amen, wouldn't think about dancing around a totem pole and worshiping the different faces of the gods, amen, that the Indian tribes worshiped as they danced around those totem poles. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. An idol, amen, is an idol. Amen. An idol is anything that we allow, amen, to come between us and God, right? Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be an image of silver and gold. It doesn't have to be a totem pole. It doesn't have to be, amen, a cross hanging around a neck. Hallelujah. Amen. A, an image of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't have to go and kiss the foot of Peter. We don't have to pray to Peter. We don't have to pray to, pray to St. Andrew. Amen. We don't have to pray to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of us, amen, wouldn't even think about praying to Mary. Amen. Or praying to Peter or praying to Andrew or, amen, Philip, Bartholomew or whoever it is, they, amen, say that we can pray to. Hallelujah. Amen. But an idol is an idol. Amen. And an, and an idol is anything. Anything. Amen. doesn't have to be an, uh, 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 an image of anything. Hallelujah. It can be anything that we allow to come between us and God. So now, today, we got all of this stuff that entertains us. Hallelujah. And we really do like being entertained, don't we? It's easier to be entertained than it is to pray and believe God for a revival. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier to be entertained by something than it is to pray and seek God and fast and believe God for a revival that we need desperately today. Hallelujah. But it's easier to be entertained than it is to pray for revival. Revival is what we need, but we're wrapped up in entertainment today here in America. Now, I'm not saying you personally or me personally. Hallelujah. But there's a lot of people in churches that are so wrapped up in Amen, in entertainment, hallelujah. They don't even think about revival. They don't even think about, amen, the praying somebody through the Holy Ghost. They don't even think about fasting for a lost soul or praying for a lost individual, hallelujah. They don't even think about it, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. To the point that today, hallelujah, amen, not many wealthy, highly educated, prominent people, amen, are praying to God and seeking 
for a revival the way that they did. Amen. Just a little over 100 years ago. Hallelujah. Why did all those, why did those wealthy people come? Why did those prominent people come to Azusa Street? Amen. They had been praying and asking God for revival. And when they heard that revival was here, they came. They traveled. Amen. They did whatever they could to get over here to be a part of that revival. But today, amen, we've got much more wealthy people in the, in the world than we did back then. Hallelujah. Certainly more government people, certainly more prominent people, amen, today than we did back then. Hallelujah. But we're not seeing that group of people flood the doors of the church. Hallelujah. I'm not degrading any of us. You may be wealthy. You may be educated. You, you know, we've got wealthy people, educated people, smart people here. Hallelujah. We, we've got all kinds of classes of people here. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not saying anything about that. Hallelujah. But I'm saying we don't see those types of people flock into the church today. You know why? Because they, their money, their money can buy them more entertainment. Hallelujah. And they're spending their money on entertainment rather than, amen, in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're not seeing a mass, amen, inclusion of the wealthy and the highly educated, prominent people that are out there in this world today. Hallelujah. Maybe that's why God said just a finger full of blood will do for the top of the altar. Just a finger full of blood. You anoint the horns of the altar with a finger full of blood. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that'll do for the upper end. Just a finger full of blood will do for the upper end. Hallelujah. I was talking to a preacher on the phone recently. And as preachers do sometimes, we talk about church problems and not, you know, didn't talk, I didn't talk to that preacher about none of y'all's problems, but I talked to him about church issues in general. Nothing specific, no, in, no, no certain thing. I don't want anybody going away thinking I'm talking about your problems to another preacher. I don't take your problems to other preachers. Hallelujah. Never done that. Never, never do that. Hallelujah. But in generalities, we were talking about church issues and church problems today, about church stuff, all right? Hallelujah. And, you know, in talking to him, I found out he's dealing with a lot of stuff just like we're dealing with a lot of stuff. He's dealing with the same stuff. You know, it don't matter if you live in Kentucky or Tennessee or Alabama or New York City or Canada or Mexico. It don't matter where you live. Amen. You, you, you know, the devil's the devil wherever you go. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're all dealing. Amen. It may not be the identical thing, but we're all dealing with stuff so similar. Amen. That we feel like as preachers, at least, we kind of understand each other. Amen. Hallelujah. He said to me, amen, Brother Morrell, amen, the people that me and you, amen, and other pastors today, hallelujah, will have to work with, amen, are mainly, he did use the word mainly, not completely, not totally. He said, but the people that you and I, amen, are going to have to deal with today, amen, are going to be people that are on the bottom. Are people that are mainly on the bottom. Not only are they on the bottom, but most of them have been on the bottom for a long time. He said, you and I are dealing with people today that have lost all hope. He said, Brother Ray, the majority of the people that I deal with come to our church Amen. Hallelujah. They have lost all hope, and we are their last resort. They've tried everything else in the world. Amen. And they put God at the end of the list. They put God, amen, at the bottom of the list. Hallelujah. So when all hope is gone, amen, they come to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, that's just who we're going to have to deal with today. He said, you and I are going to have to deal with people who are mainly busted and broke. Hallelujah. People who are at their wit's end. And I'm sitting there listening to it, and I'm thinking, okay. Amen. It was just two preachers talking among themselves. 
about the church scene in 2018. Hallelujah. Amen. We are basically, amen, we are basically today working with people who have bottomed out. Now, you need to understand this as well as I need to understand this. Hallelujah. Amen. We are working with people, amen, who have basically bottomed out. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we are working with people today or trying to work with people today, amen, in which, amen, it can't get any worse for them. Hallelujah. You know what I see now? You know what I see now? Hallelujah. Amen. After talking to that preacher on the phone, after having read these scriptures, amen, just recently, and having God, amen, to direct my attention to, amen, what each one of these verses of the scripture said, amen, after I had that conversation with that preacher, amen, God just brought that conversation together, amen, with the scriptures that I just had read, And just kind of put it in light. Just kind of put it in a light for me. Hallelujah. You know, you know what I see now? God knew that way before we knew that. That was two preachers on the phone talking about dealing with people that are on the bottom. And it was like, you know, almost a, a new, not not necessarily a new revelation, <laughs> hallelujah, to, to, to us. But it was just like, you know, I, you know, I'm talking to somebody that knows where I'm at. And I'm talking to somebody who I know where he's at, hallelujah. Amen. You know, and it's kind of like, this is just like a, an eye-opening thing here. All across this planet, all across this globe, all across this America, amen, they are preachers, apostolic preachers dealing with, amen, the same thing, amen, that Higher Praise Tabernacle is dealing with. Amen, we are dealing mainly with people on the bottom. Hallelujah. Amen, but you know what? God knew that, amen, long before we ever, it ever dawned on us, amen, God knew it before we did. Hallelujah. Amen, that there would be much greater need, amen, for much more of his blood, amen, at the bottom of the altar, amen, than there would be at the top of the altar. All the top of the altar ever got, amen, was a finger full of blood, amen, but the bottom of the altar, amen, got buckets full of blood, amen, poured on it continually, amen, for generation after generation, hallelujah. God knew that there would be a much greater need, amen, for the blood, amen, of the sin sacrifice at the bottom of the altar, rather than at the top of the altar. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if that makes any sense to you or not. Hallelujah. But it did to me. So he said to the priest in the Old Testament, pour out the buckets of blood. Don't go outside the camp and waste it. Don't go, amen, anywhere else and just pour it out. Pour it out, amen, at the base of the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I think God knew a long time before we knew, amen, that the greatest need for the greatest amount of blood that was shed for sin, amen, would be at the base of the altar, amen, and not at the top of the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I got to admit this to you tonight. Amen. And we're not going to be up here much longer. You may get a little bit of a break tonight. I don't know. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm going to admit to you tonight, amen, that I was on the bottom when I cried out to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. I'm not throwing stones at anybody tonight. Amen. Because I was on the bottom. Amen. When I started crying out to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I wasn't a rich man. I wasn't an affluent man. I wasn't a government official. I wasn't a diplomat. Amen. I wasn't anybody, amen, that had any title whatsoever, amen, to anything in this world. I was on the bottom. I was living my life on the bottom. Amen. And when I got sick of living on the bottom, hallelujah, amen, I started crying out to God, hallelujah. And you know what I have to say here tonight? 
Amen. Thank God. Thank God that there was enough blood down there. Amen. To cover my multitudes of sin. Amen. When I started crying out. Amen. From the bottom. Hallelujah. I was on the bottom when I cried out. Huh? I probably didn't have $20 in the bank when I started crying out to God. Not that that has anything to do with anything. Amen. But I was busted. I was broke. I had a wife and two kids to raise. Hallelujah. I was struggling. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd been drinking. I'd been smoking. I'd been doing smoking a little weed. And, amen. All this kind of stuff spent. Amen. Every dime of extra money we had on stuff like that. Hallelujah. And the more I did that stuff, the lower I got. The lower I got. The lower I got. Hallelujah. Until I got down to the bottom and I realized, hey, amen, there ain't nowhere to turn. There ain't nowhere else to turn. Hallelujah. Amen. So thank God I turned to God from that bottom. Amen. That I found myself in, hallelujah, I cried out to God, and thanks be unto God, there was enough blood there, amen, there was enough blood there at the bottom of that altar, amen, to cover my multitude of sin, hallelujah. Some, no, I'm not even going to put it that way. I was going to say some of you were at the bottom when you cried out, but I think I could probably say most of you. I think I could probably probably say most of you were at the bottom when you cried out to God. Hallelujah. So we're in the same boat here, right? I was on the bottom. You were on the bottom. Most of us on the bottom. Hey, there may be a few people in here that wasn't on the bottom. Amen. Hallelujah. Not many. That don't mean there ain't any. Huh? Not many wise, not many noble, not many, you know, hey, that don't mean there ain't any. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something. God can save the rich folks. Amen. Just like God can save the poor folks. Hallelujah. God can save us. Amen. No matter what statue of life that we come from tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. But we got to, amen, we got to humble ourselves. Amen. Down. And we've got to cry out to God, rich or poor. If you're living way up here, if you're going to get to God, you got to get way down here with the rest of us. I'm not telling you you got to give all your money away. You got to sell, amen, your nice house, your nice cars, and give all your good stuff away. No, amen. But you do have to humble yourself. Amen. You do have to get meek and lowly. Amen. The way that the rest of us did. Hallelujah. Amen. To find the blood that can cover your multitude of sins. Amen. Thank God there was enough blood there when you cried out to cover your multitude of sin. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we get up and we get testifying and we get preaching and we get naming sins that we committed. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, I ain't never named all of my sins. And I ain't about to start tonight. Huh? Hey, there's some stuff you don't need to know about, right? Sin is sin. Thank God there was enough blood there to cover our sins around the bottom of that altar. Buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of blood was poured out at the bottom of those altars in the Old Testament. Took a lot of blood to cover sin, didn't it? Amen. Took millions of gallons and millions of buckets of blood to cover Amen. To roll ahead the sins of those Old Testament saints just, just to get their sin rolled ahead for a year. Amen. Hallelujah. It took a, took a whole lot of blood. Hallelujah. You know, I tried to Google it. I tried to get an estimate of how much blood, amen, is in this animal, that animal, that animal, that animal, so I could get some kind of idea of how much blood may have been shed back there for us. Hallelujah. Or for them. Amen. Couldn't even get close. Hallelujah. Amen. The human body of Jesus. Now, we got doctor here tonight. He can correct me if I'm wrong. I think the human body carries about a gallon and a half of blood. Is that right? About a gallon and a half of blood. Jesus lived in a body just like our body, a human body. So I can estimate that his body carried about a gallon and a half of blood. Hallelujah. A lot of that blood ran down that old rugged cross. Amen. The day that he was crucified. Hallelujah. Amen, man. Hallelujah. Just like other men. Amen. With a human body hung on a cross, nails in his hand, nails in his feet, spear in his side. 
Hallelujah. That blood ran down that old rugged cross. Hallelujah. Amen. And you may ask me or say tonight, amen, hasn't, hasn't the blood of Jesus, amen, been used up by now? Hallelujah. If he, if he only had a gallon and a half of blood, amen, a lot of that blood run down that cross. How in the name of God is there enough blood, amen, today to cover, amen, the multitude of sins of humanity today? Hallelujah. Amen. Hasn't the blood of Jesus been used up already? Amen. If it was human blood, amen, then I would have to say yes. But Jesus was more than a human. You hear me tonight? Jesus was more than a man. He was a man, but he was more than a man. He was a man, and he was God. Amen. All wrapped up in flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. He was, a, he was the man God. He was God. Uh, amen. Manifested in flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. He had a dual nature. That still confuses the highly educated today. Ain't you glad you know who Jesus is? Ain't, ain't you glad that it's not confusing? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That Hallelujah. That God came and robed himself in flesh. Hung that flesh on that old rugged cross to save us. Hallelujah. His dual nature will continue to confuse the highly educated. But his blood was God's blood. You need a verse of scripture? Acts 20 and verse 28 says this. Take heed thereto, therefore unto yourselves and to all of the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Whose church is it? God's church. Amen. Which he, who? Which he, God, hath purchased with his own blood. Hallelujah. Amen. The blood that was in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, was not human blood. It was God's blood. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. God's blood is multiplied every time a sinner, amen, hits the bottom, amen, and cries out in repentance. Hallelujah. And get baptized in what in the name of Jesus? Amen. Every time that sinner hits the bottom and cries out to God, that blood is multiplied to them. Amen. It takes a whole lot of blood, uh, amen, to cover a whole lot of sin tonight. Amen. But God's blood is multiplied to every sinner tonight. Amen. That would repent of their sin. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. 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 He may have had uh, about a about a gallon and a half of blood in his human body. But that blood, that blood is still covering multitudes of sins every day because God multiplies it. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus will never be used up. The blood of Jesus that was sacrificed for sin will never be used up. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I'm doing a pitiful thing trying to explain what I'm saying here tonight. Hallelujah. Maybe the little bit of blood that was at the top of the altar was for, amen, the few rich and affluent, highly educated, prominent people in the world. <laughs> Maybe that represents... All the need that there is, amen, for those people to come to God. But the buckets full of blood that are poured out at the bottom of that altar was for the masses of sinners like you and I. The masses of sinners like you and I that would come to that altar one day and find the blood that would cover our sins. I heard it said that, I got to be careful here. I heard it said that somebody out west pastors a church or pastored a church that had at least six multimillionaires in that church hallelujah now this revelation came out about 20 years ago that this pastor this church this pastor of this church had at least six multimillionaires in his church hallelujah and uh when that word got out among all of the little preachers, <laughs> me included, 
all the little preachers started praying to God, God, send me one. It ain't right. He got six and we ain't got none. <laughs> all the little preachers across the country, amen, pastoring 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 people started crying out, God, send me a millionaire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every small church, every pastor who's struggling financially has prayed to God. Send me at least one or two of them. Huh? Come on now. Especially since we found out that guy had six, and that was 20 years ago. He may have 12 now. I mean, the way the church is growing, I ain't mentioning no names, and y'all don't know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> he may have 12 or 15 multimillionaires now. Hallelujah. Amen. But most churches today struggle because most people wait until they're at the end of their rope to find a church, to find God in, to repent of their sins, to get baptized in Jesus' name, get the Holy Ghost. Most people. Why do most people struggle? Why do most churches struggle? Amen. Because most people that come, come when they're on the bottom. Hallelujah. So it's hard to, you know, it's hard to get up there, and it's hard to get going, and it's hard to, you know, to get things, you know, moving in the direction that you really want it to. Hallelujah. Amen. We look around here at this beautiful sanctuary God has given us, and this tremendous church right here. Hallelujah. But you know what? Amen. Compared to some of the churches I've seen out there, amen, they would look at us, oh, y'all go to that little church down there in that little box. Well, it ain't a little box to me. It's a big church. But to them and their big uh, hallelujah. Amen. But, amen, most churches struggle today because people come to God when they're at their rope's end. You know what? That's all right. That's all right. That's when I came to God when I was at my rope's end. That's when most of the people here came to God when they was, you know, and didn't have nowhere else to turn. Uh, you know, I've tried everything else in the world. I've experienced everything else in the world. Why don't I give God a chance? Something we should have tried first. Amen. We put it off till the last. Hallelujah. But thank God we made it. Amen. Into the house of God. Heard an apostolic preacher preach. Amen. Got under conviction. Went to an altar and found some blood there. Hallelujah. It's all right. As long as the blood still flows from Calvary. Jesus said, the poor you'll always have with you. Hallelujah. The poor you'll always have with you. Hallelujah. So let's get, uh, let's get to church. And the altar, amen. Let's get to church and let's get to the altar to where there's still plenty of blood at the base of the altar. Hallelujah. There's still blood. Still blood. There's still blood flowing. Hallelujah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't live back in those days. I'm glad I never had to throw an animal on an altar and slit its throat and bleed it and cut it up and offer certain parts to this and certain parts for that. And I'm glad I didn't have to do all that. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. But I'm telling you, there was a whole lot of blood, amen, uh, offered back then, and there's still a whole lot of blood today available to us. Hallelujah. They get to the bottom and say, God, I need some help. The only, the only alternative I have from here is up. It's either up or out. And nobody wants to check out without God in their life. Amen. You hear me tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. When you get to the bottom, there ain't but one place you need to look, and that's up because you don't want to check out without God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you do, you'll go to a worse place. Amen, then where you live now on the bottom, hallelujah. Hell ain't, hell ain't going to be a pretty place for anybody, hallelujah. So when we hit bottom and we start crying out to God, let's realize there's still plenty of blood there to cover our sins. It is written on the Statue of Liberty, uh, some words written there on the Statue of Liber Liberty, which I think probably shouldn't be written on the Statue of Liberty. It should be the motto of the church. Amen. The words on the Statue of Liberty say, Give me your tired. Give me your poor. Give me your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. 
you know, in our in our desire to see a bunch of millionaires get converted, uh, that probably ain't going to happen. But you know what? There's a whole lot of people out there scraping bottom today. There's a whole lot of people out there that has gotten to their ropes in and gotten to their wits in and they don't have they don't have they don't have many options left. Hallelujah. If you and I, amen, if you and I could recognize those people, if you and I could, amen, let the Spirit of God direct us to those people that are hurting and that are poor and that are needy and that are Amen. Just just needing our help. If we can let God direct us to those people and witness to them and talk to them and invite them to church. Hallelujah. Amen. We can invite them to church. Amen. With the confidence, amen, of knowing that God's blood still flows from Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. If we can just get them to church, get them in a spiritual atmosphere, get them, amen, to where the power of conviction can get a hold of their heart. Amen. If they do and when they do come to the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. We ought to be ready and willing and able to get up there and help them pray. Give me your poor. Give me your tired. Give me your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. I know when I was wrapped up in sin and bound by sin, you know, the more you get wrapped up in sin, you know, the tighter it starts squeezing you and the more you feel like, amen, you are truly in bondage and you can't really breathe and you can't really live life the way you need to and Amen. Hallelujah. When you make your way to church and make your way to an altar, God just sets you free. Hallelujah. Amen. And when 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 the Lord sets you free, amen, you are free indeed tonight. Hallelujah. I wonder tonight if anybody appreciates the freedom that you have in knowing God, the freedom that you found when the, when His blood, amen, touched your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Redeemed you from your sin and set you free. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Buckets of blood. Hallelujah. The blood still flows. I wish somebody could get a song about the blood. I don't know what song you sing about the blood tonight, but I'm telling you, a whole lot of blood. Jesus knew a lot sooner than we knew that it was going to take a whole lot of blood to cover a whole lot of sins. And we have in my mind, in my mind, I can just close my eyes and picture those priests bleeding that sacrifice into a container, whether it was a bucket or whatever, bleeding that sacrifice into that container, and then just reaching down and taking a finger full of blood and anointing the horns of the altar. And then I can see them looking down into that blood of that animal, thinking about their own sins, thinking about why did it take blood? Why did it take an animal sacrifice? Why did it take the shed blood of an animal, an innocent animal, amen, to take care of my sins? And with those questions in their mind, they was commanded by God after they anointed the horns of the altar to take that container, that bucket of blood, and just dump it at the foot of the altar. Hallelujah. And I believe that signifies to us, praise God, hallelujah, that there's going to be a whole lot more people coming to God, amen, who are downtrodden, who are down and out, who are, amen, who feel like, man, their whole life had not been nothing but bad luck, one bad event after another bad event after another bad event. I wonder if anybody here tonight felt that way when you came to God. I wonder if anybody here tonight feels that way tonight. Hallelujah. I don't know who, who all may be here tonight. I don't know who may need this little sermonette tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it, it may be a sermonette to you, but it means something to me. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. I've got that image of these buckets of blood being poured out at the base of that altar. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. Making me to understand that it was going to take a whole lot of blood. Hey, Amen. To cover a whole lot of sins. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. If we could just humble ourselves and crawl up to the base of that altar. Hey, Amen. We'll find the blood. We'll find the blood of Calvary there waiting for us tonight. I wonder if we could stand tonight together. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't I don't know I don't know really what to say. Don't really know what to do here tonight except just trust in the Lord. The blood is at the altar tonight. The blood can be found at the altar tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Oh, yes. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's still a powerful message. Hallelujah. Even though the multitudes are turning a deaf ear to it, one day, one day when they hit bottom, one day when they get down and out, one day maybe when they get to where they have nowhere else to turn and nothing else to entertain them, Maybe they'll entertain coming to church. Maybe they'll entertain going to an altar. Surrendering their lives to God. Come on, somebody. Let's sing it. God reaches to the highest mountain. Hallelujah. And it flows to the Lord. of the blood of Calvary. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. For it reaches to the highest mountain. you can reach up to the top of the altar. Remember, there's more blood at the bottom of the altar than there ever was at the top. All you got to do is reach out and touch it. All you got to do is reach out, amen, and let God touch you tonight. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God bless you tonight. Thank you for coming. Amen. You're dismissed in the name of Jesus.